Hello everybody. This video will be looking at the internal re rate of return which is a financial technique that we use when we're um, appraising um, a long-term project. Just to revise We have, in long-term decision-making, we're looking at financially and analyzing a project to look at whether that project is going to be worthwhile over the whole life of um, the endeavor. There are a number of different financial appraisal techniques, and we're going to be looking at the internal rate of return. Now, this does assume that you understand completely how to do a net present value calculation. That will be assumed as we go along and talk about the internal rate of return technique. It's best to visualize the internal rate of return on a graph because what it does, it looks at the interest yield for an investment project over the whole life of the project. If our internal rate of return which is here, that's our internal rate of return. If that exceeds a target rate of return, say here, then the project has got a positive net present value and is worth um, undertaking. If the cost of capital for a business is greater than the internal rate of return, then the MPV is going to be negative and the project is not going to be worthwhile. So here is the internal rate of return. If our cost of capital is less, project is worthwhile. If our cost of capital is greater, the project would have a negative MPV. Now, normally we wouldn't expect you to um, look at this in a graphical way. We can examine the whole problem using interpolation. So with interpolation in the um, IRR, we're going to be using what looks like a pretty um, long formula. It looks complicated and many students would say I would never ever remember it. However, it has a number of different points. We always start here with our low cost of capital and here is the difference between our two cost of capitals. And sometimes when we practice using the um, equation more and more, it just becomes pretty intuitive. It's best that we um, have an example to show how that formula wor works. So first of all, let's just have it all in one um, window. We're going to have this very simple example. We want to find the IRR for the following project. I haven't put many words in here. It really is um, a number of years um, and these are time is all in years and then we have these cash flows negative for the initial investment of eighty thousand um, pounds and then we have cash inflows over the next four years now with the internal rate of return we need to look at two um, potential cost of capitals to begin with and one of the big questions that students have is how do I select um, which cost of capitals to practice with to see if I can use the formula? Well, to start with guess, some questions will tell you if you use 15% um, and 20% cost of capital, um, they will inform you which ones to do. But if not, you just do it by trial and error. So in this question, I have done an MPV calculation for two cost of capitals, 5% and 10%. I've just picked those out of the air. Okay. Now, as soon as I've calculated the net present value for these two cost of capitals, I can see that it's going to work because what you need is you need the low cost of capital has to be positive 
and the high cost of capital has to be negative. If you think about it, it goes back to the graph here. We want to calculate this point here in the middle and it's going to be um, between a positive NPV and a negative NPV. So here we've got our positive NPV and here we've got our negative NPV and the IRR falls between the two. So now I know I've got a positive NPV of 668,000 I'm sorry, 6,685 6, pounds and I've got a negative 425 pounds. So now I'm going to calculate the IRR. So for the IRR, I'm going to start with my low, my 5%. Okay. And then with my 5%, I'm going to add to that my percentage. And the percentage I'm going to work out quite easily using interpolation. We're looking at the MPV for the lowest as a proportion of the whole movement of the MPV. So if you think on the graph, here we have an MPV of 685 and here we have an MPV of 425 and I want to have my length there as a proportion of the whole distance of movement of that MPV. And then I just multiply it by the movement of my percentages. And I would do this bit by bit by bit. Luckily with modern calculators we can use brackets to separate out this part, this part, and this part. Okay. Now I want you to practice that and what you should get when you do the various elements using your calculators you would have 0. you would have um, 0. 0.05 plus our calculation for um, the second element and then multiply that second element times 0 0.05 Okay, so that's that buckets twice. And that will come to 9.7%. If you just calculate the IRR um, itself, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. You actually have to compare it to the business's cost of capital. So in this case, if the cost of capital For a business is 8%, the project will go ahead. If the cost of capital is 12%, then it wouldn't. The IRR as a technique um, has some advantages. Um, as a percentage, a percentage return of a percentage yield of a project over its life it is often understood well by managers. They're used to working with percentages. You don't need to um, specify the discount rate to calculate the IRR. However, um, it is a you, you need it really to make sense of the IRR. It looks it takes the whole life of the project into consideration, as does the MPV method, and it takes account of the time value of money, as does the MPV method. Um, it looks at cash flows rather than profit, again in line with the MPV method. The problem with it as a technique is that the whole interpolation mathematical calculation gives an estimated IRR. The greater the distance between the positive and negative NPVs, the less accurate the IRR calculation. 
So in this example here, if I had chosen a cost of capital of 5% and 20%, that would have been slightly different. It would have been less accurate. If I had chosen a cost of capital of um, to calculate the various MPV of oops, uh, 8% and 10%, it would have been more accurate. The distance between 8% and 10% is much less. doesn't mean it's, it's wrong when that, that distance is greater. It's just less accurate. Um, also, um, some people get confused between the IRR and the accounting rate of return because they sound similar. Um, one of the big problems, I think, with the IRR is that it ignores the relative size of um, an investment. If you're comparing two investments, if you have one investment that requires a cost of capital of um, a thousand, and another that requires a um, sorry requires an investment of a thousand, and another that requires an investment of a um, hundred thousand, they could have the same IRR. Obviously, they're very different investments, very different decisions. So it ignores that relative size. If discount rates, if your cost of capital is expected to change over the life of the project, then the IRR cannot be um, adapted for this. Whereas with an MPV, um, um, you can adapt your technique to take into account changes in the cost of capital. Um, there could be more than one IRR, and that is particularly so if you have irregular cash flows. So if you have um, a cost, um, an investment, um, a negative cash flow at the beginning and then you have some positive and then some negative and then some positive and then some negative cash flows over the life of the project you're quite likely to get two IRRs and that can be very complicated um, as with any um, technique where we're looking into the future you've always got to be aware that everything we do is an estimate all of our cash flows are an estimate um, but added to that, the IRR using interpolation is also an estimate. So that adds another um, degree of estimation on top. So maybe what I'm really trying to say that if you calculate the MPV and the IRR on a particular project and you get conflicting answers, so one technique says that you should do um, you should go ahead with the project, and the other technique says that you shouldn't then I would always take the MPV approach. Um, it, it's just more stable than the IRR. Um, however, as we've said before, the MPV has problems and there you would use the technique of sensitivity analysis to really assess the risk of um, the project, whether it's, it's, it's a risky project, whether your estimates are likely to change um, your decision. Sensitivity analysis, that's the subject of a different topic. Thank you very much.